Welcome back to another video from American Original Dollhouse Miniatures and More. My name is Todd, and today I will walk you through building the American Bank. Uh, before we begin, hit pause, take a few minutes, and go through the instructions and read them thoroughly, and also grab the tools that you're going to need. For this kit, we are going to need some one inch masking tape, sticky masking tape. Make sure it's not the blue painter's tape uh, or a low adhesive tape. It must be a sticky masking tape. You're gonna need a pencil, a toothpick, a pair of scissors, and also a damp and a dry rag. Take the time also to cut out the paper templates so we are ready to go. All right, before we begin, I'm gonna go through a few of the basics in building. Uh, I'm gonna talk about two different methods of applying glue. Uh, one would be a bead of glue, and the second would be a film of glue. Now, the, both methods start with a bead of glue, and the film basically is just the bead that's smoothed out over the surface. For an example, I have a V groove between two panels here. I would apply a bead of glue to the lower part of that V. So using my glue bottle, I will apply just a small bead, about 3 30 seconds of an inch, or about the thickness of a cooked grain of rice, approximately. You want enough glue that we get squeeze out when we close the panels together. So you can see here we got squeeze out along the entire surface, which is good, okay? The second and the more common is a film of glue. Now for a film of glue, I'll still apply a bead. In this case, it's to the center of the panel. I'm not gonna go all the way, but to the center of the panel. And now using my finger, I'm just going to smooth that out so I cover all of the surface, okay? I'm not gluing down here or up here, this is just for an example. And then I would, if it's not thick enough, I would just apply a really, really small bead to the center and just make sure that it's thick enough before attaching that. And those are the two methods. Uh, with that, let's begin. Okay, now that you've had some time to read through the instructions, let's get started with step number one. Uh, for this step, we will need one column and we'll need two side panels, a front panel and a back panel. Also, to check for square, we're going to use a door now, if you do have a carpenter square, that also works excellent for this. Uh, it's not necessary though. We will use, I will show you how to use the door to check for square. But if you do, use it. We'll start by laying out the front panel and then placing the column on the bottom so it's flush with the bottom. We'll take one side panel Line it up, keeping the bottom tight. Now we want the bottom to be perfectly straight across, okay, and tight together. Let's slide that down. And I'm going to put one piece of tape across the seam just to hold that in place. Now I prefer to cut all my tape at one time, so you might want to hit pause and cut a bunch of strips of tape for each of the seams. Now I'm going to slide the column down, install the next body panel, which would be the back panel. Again, very important that the bottoms stay straight across. That's why we're using a column here. So that is very important to keep those straight across, otherwise your panels will not close properly. Again, a piece of tape down the seam. Press the tape firmly into place. And if you haven't already, dust off, use your dry rag and dust off the panels before applying the tape. Slide that down a little bit. And the last panel, 
another side again keep that bottom nice and tight and apply tape down the seam okay now I like to use long pieces of tape across it saves from having to cut several pieces of tape so I'm going to take one piece of tape and running from the front panel all the way to the back panel as high as I can get it and I'm pulling it a little bit I'm keeping it taut I'm not pulling overly tight but just enough to keep it taut press that firmly into place now if you haven't dusted off your panels the tape is not going to stick so do make sure that you do that also I'm going to apply one to the bottom again pulling it slightly tight just to keep everything tight press it firmly in place and finally one across the middle feel free to put more on there if you need to if you want to make sure that it is secure or you, you think that it's not secure enough then I'm going to flip the panels over grabbing the front panel I'm going to flip it back and then stick my finger underneath the back panel flip it all the way over actually I'm going to stand it up first and close the panels and make sure that everything closes well now it's going to be tight this this last gap to pull that closed is going to be pretty hard to do that's what you want you want it to be fairly tight okay but you want the bottom to be touching your work surface so you want everything that's why it's important to keep everything in a straight line okay now before we apply glue make sure that you have three pieces of tape ready to go for the final seam we'll flip the panels upside down so that the V's are facing us now and we're going to apply our bead of glue to the bottom of the valleys and now these are pretty big valleys so make sure that there's enough glue to cover I'm just going to add a little extra glue to that again to the bottom and I'm just going to go over it twice I'm not applying a ton of glue I don't want to have too much to clean up but I also want to make sure that the glue squeezes out now for the final side we need to glue one of the sides so lift the side panel up and apply a bead of glue to the center and now since our finger is handy we're going to use our finger and I'm just tapping just to spread the glue out a little bit and then just spread it so we have our film now you want to make sure all the surfaces are wet that's going to help protect the birdhouse in the long run and if something is dry add a little more glue and then I like to after everything is wet then I like to take a bead and run a bead down closer to the inside of the panel so we don't have too much squeeze out on the outside or the center is just fine and then we can stand our panels up actually I, we're not going to stand it up we're going to close the panels like an accordion close up the front now you can see the squeeze out is all the way across the seam that's what we want and we'll close the final side bringing the final two sides together again make sure that the bottoms line up we'll take our first piece of tape starting from the front panel I'm going to make sure that that tape is stuck down well now I'm just going to pull I'm going to use this finger hold the tape in place pull firmly not too hard you don't want to rip the tape I'm pulling straight if I were to pull down you might rip the tape because of that sharp corner so pull across and then pull down and down to the front and push the tape in place now you can see we have a, a small gap at the front of this joint that is okay 
the, the panels actually meet thoroughly there, but once we square everything up, that joint is gonna shrink. I'm gonna apply a piece of tape now to the center, the same way, holding it, pulling down, and pulling it tight, pressing firmly in place. One for the top, again, the same method. And we'll push that into place. Okay, now we're gonna square the birdhouse. So we need to, first of all, take our damp rag and wipe the inside of the birdhouse, the glue that has squeezed out. And I'm just gonna clean all four corners up. And then I will stand the birdhouse up flat on my surface and here's where the door comes in. I'm gonna place this door into the corner, like so. And now you can see there's a slight gap that we need to close. So by pinching these two sides, we'll close that gap. And you can see that goes away like so. Now to hold that in place, I am going to use a piece of tape across the corner, from corner to corner of the birdhouse. And what that will do is hold the two, pull the two ends together and close that gap and square everything up. So I'm gonna start from the front, press that firmly into place. Again, I'm looking on the inside of my house and I'm watching the door. I'm just gonna push with my hand until it is perfect. Like so. And apply the tape to the front of the house. I'm just gonna check it again. And if it's a little out of whack, just squeeze it a little bit and it will stay in place for you eventually. And there you have it, we're square. Let's set the body aside, allow it to dry, and we'll move on to step number two. Okay, step number two, building the roof. Uh, for this step, we're gonna need a column, the two roof panels, and also make sure that you dust off your panels. Dust off all the panels before we apply tape. Any parts that are gonna receive tape uh, make sure that you wipe them off with your damp or dry rag. Either one is just fine. We just want to get the dust off of there so the tape adheres. Uh, we're going to line up using our column the two panels and make sure that one side is nice and flat. Make sure that the seam is tight. Apply one piece of tape down the seam. Press firmly in place. We're going to apply one at the top one at the bottom and one in the middle. We'll flip the panels over. Again, we have the valley, so we're gonna apply a bead about 3 seconds of an inch or the thickness of a grain of cooked rice. Close the body panels. I'm sorry, close the roof panels. And I'm going to use my damp rag to remove the excess glue, holding the panels firmly closed. I will grab my 14 inch piece of tape or the long piece of tape and running from the top on one side, let's move it a little bit so we have a little more tape there. I'll pull the tape around to the other side. Don't pull too tightly because you will rip the tape on the sharp corners of the roof. Just tight enough that we close our gap so we should have a nice tight gap there. And we will set the roof aside for about 15 minutes or so to set up. All right, step number three, assembling the roof cornice. Uh, there are three pieces to the roof cornice your long front piece, and then we have two side pieces. 
Now I'm going to apply glue to one of the two side pieces and that'll be a film of glue. I'm going to apply my bead in a circle so I have enough glue there and just smooth it out over the entire surface. Make sure all the surfaces are wet and then I'm just going to apply a little extra Line it up with the correct side. Make sure that we're doing the right side here. Now I'm going to line up the front corner and the back piece should be flush, okay? And I'm just going to press these two together and I'm just going to hold that for a couple of minutes while it sets up, okay? We'll speed it up here and we'll do the other side. Again, apply glue in the same way. And an extra bead down the center. and apply to the other side. Okay. Now you can just hold these together for a couple of minutes and allow the glue to begin to set up. And once they set for a couple of minutes, we can move on to the next step. Okay, step number four, we'll assemble the body corbels. Uh, for this step, you're gonna need all 10 of the corbel parts for, make sure we got the right ones. For this example, I'm just gonna do one side. So I have five parts here. I have a left side, a right side, a center, and two dots. Okay, I'm gonna lay them out like so, so they're upside down, so the left and right are upside down. Apply glue to one side of the inner corbel, and I'm just gonna use my finger to apply the film to everything here. I'm just gently tapping to move the glue around. And we just want our wet film. Use our rag, wipe off excess from our fingers, and then place that on top of the correct outer corbel. And we're going to line up the top and the back, okay? So the inners are slightly smaller so we want the tops lined up. So what I'm doing here is I'm using my surface to push down and make sure that those are flush. Also do it on the back. Now, if you run your finger across that and you feel a large ridge, then you need to adjust it a little bit more, which I do have a little bit of a ridge, so we'll adjust it. Check it again until it feels fairly smooth. Now I'll apply glue to the other side of the inner. Again, the handy finger. And certainly if you have a glue spreader or a stiff paintbrush that you have, a, a small paintbrush, artist brush, certainly go ahead and use those. They work wonderfully. Um, I prefer my finger, it's always at hand. Don't have to look for it. Uh, place the left corbel piece on top of the inner, squeeze the two together, and I'm just going to keep moving. I'm gonna apply a small amount of glue to one of the dots, smooth it out, Place it in about the center 
just try and eye the center of the corbel. Then I'm going to apply glue to the other dot and carefully holding everything together, wipe my finger first, carefully holding everything together, I'll flip it over and attach the dot, the second dot to the other side. And if one falls off, that's okay. We'll just put it back on. Let's get that center first. Okay. And I'm just going to apply pressure with my fingers to both dots, also to the bottom of the corbel, and just hold that for a few minutes, or not even, uh, probably about a minute or so, or even less, uh, just until the glue tacks up and holds everything together. Then we can set that one aside and do the other side of the corbel before moving on to the next step. The other, sorry, the other bank corbel before moving on to the next step. Okay, step number five, uh, assembling the entry uh, to the bank. For this step, we're going to need the facade panel, the two door columns, the door pediment, the bank sign, the arch window, arch window outer band and inner band, also the keystone, the door itself, and the two door corbels. Beginning with the door, we are going to apply glue. Actually, we're, before we do that, use your paper tape. Using your paper tape, we're going to find the center and a pencil. We're going to find the center of the facade panel and also the center of the door. The F on the paper tape marks the facade. So F for facade. We'll put a pencil line at the bottom. And also, I'm just going to take the pencil line down the front a little bit so I can still see it after I cover it up with the door. And the door we're going to mark using, what else, the D on the paper tape. Let's see here, let's put it the right way. So line up the zero with one edge. <laughs> like so. Um, let's try that. There we go. Line it up like so. And we'll mark the D. And again, just mark it on the bottom so we can see it after we install the door. Okay. Now to apply a film of glue to the back of the door. It's a pretty large surface and we want to make sure that every piece of this is covered. We want to protect it. So again, I'm going to use my finger. We all hopefully Let's see here, smooth. Okay, on the first pass here, I'm mainly just concerned with getting everything coated. It's not gonna be thick enough on the first pass, but we just wanna make sure everything's coated. Uh, have your toothpick handy, because after you install this, you will need to use your toothpick to clean out any of the tight areas that have glue squeeze out. I'm gonna apply a little more. It's wet now all the way. So I'm just gonna apply a little extra to some of the spots here. 
and just make sure it's thoroughly coated. Okay, lining up our two pencil marks that we made, I'm going to align the bottom of the door so it is flush with the bottom of the facade panel and press in place. Okay, now again, I'm gonna use my finger to feel that there's no ridge here. Okay, you want that to be nice and smooth. You can also use, again, one of the column uh, panels. You can stand it on edge like so and use that to make sure that everything is tight. It's not necessary to use that as long as you don't feel a big ridge there. You wanna make sure that the facade panel is going to sit flush with the body for the final assembly steps. Okay. Now I'm going to grab the two column pieces and apply glue to one side of each of them. Again, we wanna film. like so and place tight to the door and flush again with the bottom. Press that in place. And if you do, if you have any squeeze out, now's the time to clean that up using your toothpick. And we'll apply glue again to the other column. Smooth it out to a film and attach to the other side of the door. Again, I'm running my finger on the bottom to make sure there is no ridge. We want these to be the same so everything else fits together. Now I'm going to attach the door pediment. On the back side of the pediment, the narrow side, is where I'm going to apply the glue. That lines up like so. We're also going to apply a little bit of glue to the top of each of the columns. So let's apply to the back of that. Smooth it out. And just a small amount to each of the columns. Okay, I'm just gonna tap that in a little bit and make sure it stays in place. Place the pediment on top. And just using your eye, center the two open spaces above the columns so those are center. Okay, and press that into place. Again, the toothpick comes in handy if you have any squeeze out. Don't worry about this space here because we're gonna cover that with a sign right now. We're gonna apply glue to the back of the bank sign. And smooth. All surfaces need to be thoroughly coated. And then we'll attach the bank sign in between the two columns there. Now the bank sign is slightly shorter than the space given and that is for a shadow line. And you want that, the shadow line on the top and the bottom of the bank sign to be equal. So you want that in about the center. You can adjust it if you would like uh, maybe you want a bigger shadow line on the bottom or a larger shadow line on the top. However you would like to do that is just fine. Press that in place. Arch window. We're going to apply glue to the back of the arch window. Now there is a better side to all of these parts. Okay, the door obviously has to go one way. But for like the arch window, you'll notice there's a, a smoother side and then there's a slightly, uh, not really rough side, but there's a matte side 
That is the back side. That is where we want to apply the glue. And that goes for all the cut out pieces. Okay, so I'm gonna apply glue to the back of the arch window. Okay. And again, I'm gonna do an initial smoothing. Now I wanna get all of the window itself. So I want that entire backside to be coated. Apply a little more glue. And make sure I coat everything thoroughly. Now you don't want the glue too heavy because you're gonna end up with a lot of cleanup to remove the glue, but you do want enough that it is going to protect it and seal well. Okay, you can also apply just a little bit of glue to the bottom where it meets the top of the pediment. And center that over the top of the pediment and just stand over it and look down and you can tell where it needs to be placed. We'll move on to the outer band. Again, the same, same thing. Make sure you're doing it to the back side. And apply glue. Smooth with your finger. And once we have that, we will attach the outer ring to the arch window itself. Now attach the inner ring, a rather small piece here, so you don't need much glue. Again, smooth it out and apply the inner ring like so, pressing everything into place. Now I'm going to attach the keystone. Smooth the glue. And place like so. Whoop, let's do that again. I have a little glue on my finger and my finger is sticky. So we'll apply a little more. If anything moves while you're um, gluing parts on and you move it before it dries, uh, simply just pull the part off and reapply uh, some glue and then reattach it. So we'll reattach the keystone and we'll make sure we don't move it this time. Once the glue begins to set up, you don't want to move anything. You want to allow it to dry. Last step for the entrance are the door corbels. We're going to apply glue to the back and a small amount to the top. Like so. And center that on the door column itself, pushing tight to the pediment. And we'll do the other one. And the same thing, smooth it out, a little on the top. And attach like so. Okay, that does it for the entrance. I will set the entrance aside and move on with the next step. Okay, step number six, attaching the roof block to your roof. For this step, um, we're going to need the body assembly and the roof assembly. By now, they should have had enough time to set up. If not, 
wait until they have before you remove the tape. I've taken the time, removed all of the tape from both my roof and from the body. And I'm going to lay the body down so the front is flat on my surface. Then I'm gonna take the roof and place that in position like so. And now you can't see what I'm doing, but what I'm going to do is reach in side of the body and I'm going to mark the roof where it meets the back wall panel. So right here, okay? And I'm gonna make a mark on the roof where those two sections meet, okay? So lay it on the front, roof panel in place, I'm going to turn it, I'm gonna reach in and make sure that the pencil is real tight in that corner. We want that pencil line to be real tight. And I'm just gonna make a mark. I know you can't see, but trust me, I will show you. I'm gonna make a mark on both sides. And what we end up with is a nice pencil mark on what is the back side of the roof. This is the part of the roof that hangs over after the completion. So we have the facade panel holds everything flush right here. And we have a little bit of an overhang right there, okay? We'll remove the roof now. The roof block is going to go in front of that line. Now we want a little bit of space. We want it basically almost touching the line, but not quite. So as close to that line as possible without actually touching the line. If we go too far, we're not gonna be able to get the roof on without having to sand this block. And you don't wanna do that. That's gonna be a lot of sanding. So if you're gonna err, err on the side of being a little too loose we can always attach, or I'm sorry, we can always apply um, some masking tape to the surface of the block or duct tape. Either one work really well to add some friction to the roof. And I generally do that anyway because it kind of, it adds a little bit of friction and it keeps the roof tighter to the body. So let's apply glue to our roof block. Okay. Now it's pretty important, this is holding the roof together, or the roof on, so we want enough glue on there that this is not going to snap off. Okay, so a little thicker than the other ones. I'm gonna line it up starting with the peak, okay, the peak of the roof block towards the front and I'm gonna look for that corner, lay it down flat, and then I'm going to move it back just a little bit here. Now, just make sure that you can see that line. And real important on this is to clean up any glue that comes out on this side, okay? On this side of the block. We don't want glue built up here, that will also affect how the roof fits. Okay, and that's it for the roof block. Step number seven, attaching the columns to the facade panel. Uh, for this step, we'll need the completed facade panel and also the two body columns. Okay, if yours hasn't sat long enough for everything to, to dry or for the glue to at least set mostly, you can certainly wait until it has. I'm just going to keep moving. I'm just gonna be careful not to move any parts that I've already glued. Okay, grab one of the columns and we're gonna apply two beads of glue this time. You want approximately one bead of glue per every half inch. Since the columns are one full inch, 
we will run two beads. Now, of course, that depends on the size of the bead that you're applying to. So just as a general rule of thumb. Okay, smooth the glue out. I'm just going to wipe a little from the outside edge there. And I'm going to make sure that the bottom is flush. Again, we want all the bottoms flush and also the side where the two sides meet. And I'm just using my fingers again to feel for a ridge. Okay, there's no ridge there, so we're good. The bottom has a little ridge. I'm just going to slide it down a little bit until that ridge goes away. Until I can't feel anything anymore, and that is good. With the damp rag, just make sure that any glue squeeze out gets wiped up. And we'll do the same with the other column. Again, two beads of glue, or one extremely heavy bead, I guess, is fine. However you achieve a smooth film, it really doesn't matter. Okay. And again, I'm just wiping off of the outside edge so I don't have too much squeeze out on that outside edge. As you can see, I'm just running my finger down that edge and that pushes the glue bead back just a little bit. Okay, line up the bottoms again using my fingers as my feeler. I'm going to align the bottom, make sure that is flush, and the sides. And again, just feel for that ridge. You just want it nice and smooth transition between the two. Wipe any excess glue. And that is it for the columns. Okay, step number eight, attaching the roof cornice to the facade assembly. For this step, we're going to need the facade assembly and also the roof cornice assembly. Uh, what I have here. Now, you certainly don't have to rush through this. Uh, you can definitely allow the glue to dry, uh, but don't feel like you have to. Um, I am going to apply glue since these are different size. I want to apply the glue to the facade itself. So I need a reference line to know where the bottom of the roof cornice is. And I'm just going to place that in and raise it up just a little bit so my pencil line isn't visible when I'm done. And I'm just carefully going to draw a pencil line across the top like so. That'll give me a good reference of where to place the glue. So I will again apply two beads of glue since this is about one inch. In fact, it should be exactly one inch. So I'll apply two beads of glue. And also I'm going to apply to the tops of the column. So starting with the column, I will smooth that out to create my film. And then I will smooth this out, trying to stay above that pencil line, but I also want to make sure that everything is, is covered with glue. So we're going to go right, right to that pencil line with our glue, like so. And then I'm just going to run a little extra right down the center to make sure this attaches well. Okay, now just eyeballing it, I'm going to place that in the center and just drop it in place carefully and press down. Take a look at it before everything sits and make sure that that is center. Just apply some pressure to that until it uh, sets up for a minute or two. Now it's okay that our facade panel sits a little proud of the top. 
Uh, that is the way it should sit, okay? If you want, you can certainly, once this is all dry, you can uh, sand that so it is flush, but it is not necessary. I'm gonna remove any glue squeeze out. Okay, step number nine, attaching the corals and the date plaque. Uh, for this step, we're gonna need, again, we're gonna continue working on the facade assembly, so we'll need that. Uh, we'll also need the completed corbel assemblies and also our date plaque. Okay, starting with the corbels, we're going to apply glue to the back side and also to the top, okay? So apply a pretty heavy bead. It's a little more than a half an inch, so we want a pretty heavy bead here. Smooth that out. And smooth that one out. And line it up so it is in the center. And at the top of the column itself, and press firmly into place like so. We'll do that with the other side. Again, smooth out our glue. And attach the other side again in the center, like so. Finally, for our date plaque, film of glue to the back. And also, make sure we don't have any extra on the sides of the bottom. Also, I'm going to apply just a little bit of glue to the top of the date plaque, okay? Make sure it's the top. And just a small amount and again, with this, I just eyeball it. Certainly you can use your paper tape if you wish, and you can measure it out to find the exact center. But I just kind of use the keystone there to, to center it. You want it up tight to the roof corbel itself. However, you could uh, place it lower if you really wanted to. You can pretty much place it where you would like. Uh, but we're going to place it at the top. Okay, we'll put this aside now. Our facade assembly is complete. We can actually set this aside now and let it thoroughly dry. Okay, step 10, attaching the windows to the body. For this step, we're going to need the body assembly and also the four windows. Uh, for this example, I'm just going to install one side for you, and both sides are the exact same. So we need our two cutouts. Now the window cutouts, there are two different ones. Just to make it easier, I have them. And so you can tell where they go. And you just want to line it up. Oh, let's get it right here. You want the small side. Yeah, let's see here. Let's try it that way. Okay, you want the small side toward the outside. Okay, flush with the bottom on both of them. You can certainly just do one at a time. And then our window is gonna line up inside the bigger part, which says window there. Okay, apply our bead of glue. And I'm going to do both windows at the same time. And use our finger. You know, there's a lot of surface to this, to these windows to cover. Make sure it is all thoroughly wet. Okay, that's one side. Just a little more glue, I think we need. And the second window. And 
in a little more glue yet. Okay. And again, just make sure that surface is wet all the way through. All right. I'm just going to hold our window template in place, line up the window, and press in place. We'll remove that window template. Do the other side. Again, I'm going to hold the template, make sure it's lined up, and press window number two in place. Remove that template. And finally, I'm just going to look at the windows and visually inspect that they look right. Okay. You just want to make sure that they look straight and they look good. Just press them in place for a couple seconds and allow them to dry. When they're dry, go ahead and flip the body over and attach the other two. Okay. Step number 11, attaching the body to the base. Uh, for this step, we're going to need the body assembly and also the base along with a paper tape. I'm using a stand-in for the body since my windows are still wet on the other one. Uh, so what we're going to do here, the body, where the hole is, is the front. Okay, that's the front of the body. That is a drain hole and that will allow water to drain out. Uh, so the body goes like so. Using your paper tape, we're going to make a mark at the back of the base, okay, a half an inch. Okay, so I am lining up, oh, we can do it this way. I'm going to line up the zero so the zero is on the back and find the half inch line and make a mark right there. Then we're going to take our body and make sure we have it the right way. So the back is facing that line. We're going to just cover that pencil line and we're going to kind of center it from side to side there. Now you can certainly just eyeball it if you would like, but you can also use the paper tape. And what I like to do here is I like to fold the paper tape on the one inch line like so. Line it up on one side and make a mark on the outside edge of the base. Okay, then flip it to this side and we'll see how close we are. And I'll be, I am right on. I got lucky that time. If it doesn't line up, just adjust it until you are center. And you can keep certainly make more marks until you're center, but we're good. But what I also like to do is I like to look at it and make sure that it looks straight and it looks correct. Okay, so just a slight adjustment. Then I'm going to take my pencil and mark the bottom. Just a small mark in the front, a mark on the side, another mark in back, even though we have that pencil line, I'm going to go all the way across the back and then a mark on this side. That'll give us our placement. So when we apply glue, we know where we're going to place that. Okay. Now I'm going to apply glue to the entire bottom of my body assembly. And again, about a bead per half inch. So one bead for this since they are half inch panels. And then I will use my finger and smooth it out to create our film. It's real important that we have enough glue on the base, okay? And it's soaking in much more 
And then I applied. So I'm just going to apply another bead to the three sides there. And again, we'll smooth that out and make sure that everything is thoroughly coated, okay? This is going to be holding the base on, so you want to make sure that there is enough glue here. Okay, once you have everything wet, then I like to take an extra bead or partial bead and just run it around and we will line up our pencil marks that we made earlier. I'm going to start with the back one and I'm just going to lay the back on the pencil line so I can still see the pencil line and find our other pencil marks and place the body like so. All right, now I'm just going to apply pressure to the body. I want to make sure this is seated well into the glue. Okay, so I would recommend holding this for a minute or so and really allow that glue to, to begin to set up. Okay, you've made it to step number 12, the final step, attaching the facade to the body and the base. Okay, now since my body uh, windows have not dried yet. I'm still using my stand-in. Uh, so with that, I am going to apply glue to the front body panel. Okay. Now this, this is still wet, so I would highly recommend at this point uh, to allow the, the body to dry. Um, I am going to continue, however holding everything in place, and hopefully I don't move anything. Okay, I'm just gonna actually set it, prop it up a little bit on the facade itself, okay? And you don't wanna apply the glue to the facade, you wanna apply the glue to the body, okay? Because the facade is slightly larger, is actually quite a bit larger than the front. Now you don't have to coat this entire piece, but what you do want to do is make sure that you have a complete seal around the outside, okay, and around the inside, okay. It's easier to move up than it is to move down because you're pushing the glue and then across the bottom and the top. Okay, I don't want any gaps in there. Now you can certainly smooth this out with your finger and then I also just apply a small amount to fill in that. Okay. And then I'm also going to apply some to the bottom of the facade panel. Now this part is fairly important. You want all these pieces to be sealed. Okay. And now for this I am going to smooth everything out. And since it's real important that I have all of this heavily coated, I'm going to first smooth and then I am going to apply a little bit more to make sure we have very good contact. Okay, now I'm going to line up the bottom of the facade and I'm kind of centering it as I'm doing this, okay, I want to make sure it is about in the center. I'm just eyeballing it. And then I'm going to lean the facade panel into place, making sure that I am center, which I am. And then I'm just going to press everything 
firmly together. Okay. And you want to make sure that any glue squeeze out that comes out the top of the roof gets cleaned up. And also out of the sides. If anything comes out the side, clean that out also. And the inside doesn't matter. Okay. Now with that set, our roof panel should fit nicely into place like so. Now the block goes towards the back. And at this point, it's slightly loose, which is okay. Like I said, all we need to do is attach some glue to this side of the panel to add a little friction and make that tighter. But that does it. Okay, that concludes the American Bank Birdhouse Kit. I truly hope that you enjoyed building your birdhouse as much as I enjoyed putting it together. Um, I truly, truly want to thank everyone for all your support. Uh, for all of you, I wouldn't be here. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Todd, and I'll see you next time.